Hello and welcome to the fifth tutorial in a series of seven. In this tutorial, as you may have noticed a few moments earlier, I will be talking about lower thirds. Now, I'm not sure how many of you actually know what a lower third is, but for those of you that don't, I'm going to first ask a question. How many of you have ever seen some like science or history show where they wheel out some expert who has some random PhD? Well, you may have noticed how in the lower corner it gives their name, their occupation, whatever degree they got from college. And what you may not have known is that's exactly what a lower third is. So, let's get started. To make my lower third, I'm first going to select the rectangle shape tool. And I'm going to draw a nice big rectangle here. I'm then going to make a few more rectangles of various shapes and sizes and as you can see it's a bit boring they're all white and they're just a bunch of shapes to stay organized I'm gonna rename these I'm gonna make this base I'm going to make this additional one additional two and additional three. So you can see how we have our base and the three additional layers. So we're going to want to start with our base. Select your Bezier mask and we'll just mask out part of the rectangle. Give it an interesting shape. You can do this however you want. I have a bit of a misshapen. I don't even know what to call it but as you can see it's got a bit more of an interesting shape to it so next I'm going to select the additional one rectangle and I'm going to do pretty much the same thing with that one give it an interesting shape I'm going to continue to do that for the rest of these so I have finished masking out my various rectangles and you can see how they're all white. Now if I were to put these on top of each other, you would just see the base because they're all the same color. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to select the additional one. I'm going to hit this and I'm going to make that a nice deep blue color. I'm going to take the next one. I'm going to make that a bright red. I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to make that one fluorescent green. So now we have a complete multitude of colors. So I'm going to overlap these one on top of the other here on our lower third. I might do a little bit of rotating on them just to make it look a little bit better. And you can do that over in your inspector under properties. So I am just overlapping these a little bit, giving them a slight amount of rotation to make it look better. And once you've done that, you're going to notice that we are missing a key part in this lower third. And that would be the text itself. So once you've positioned your shapes as you like them, you're going to select your text tool which I'm sure you know by now is over here on your toolbar and you're just gonna make a simple title over top of your lower third the final cutters in this case and let's make that black instead of white so we can see it let's make it a slight bit smaller and let's maybe give it a Tiny bit of slant, just to give it a bit of pizzazz. So it's a little bit off center. We can just move that over. Now, in some parts, it's a little bit difficult to see. So there are a few ways you can fix that. One way is you just create a few more copies of your text layer, mask it out, and make different colors for each place. Or you could simply change the overall color into something bit more visible. Don't want to leave it as white. Yellow doesn't work very well. Light blue doesn't work very well. Dark blue doesn't work very well. You just kind of have to experiment with something until you find it. 
In this case, the best thing I can come up with is pink. And to make it a bit more visible, let's first take our text layer and put it into a separate group. Then select the group with all of the shapes and make that bigger. You're going to see how it shifts across the screen and there's actually a very specific way to fix that. You're going to press and hold on your mouse icon here and go down to anchor point. You're then going to drag this into about the center of your group with all of the components of your lower third. You're going to go back to transform and now when you scale it up it doesn't shift position. So let's put that about there and then we can take our text group and make that larger as well. So the pink is a little bit difficult to see on the red but it's better than most of the other colors I could find. And then there are also other things you can do with this. If you wanted to publish this into Final Cut there are certain parameters you might want to be able to change there such as scale. Over in properties you might want to change position, rotation, and you might even want to change the text itself. In fact, you would most likely want to change that. So in order to set these parameters, you would just click the triangle. And it would say publish. You would just click that. And it would be a published parameter that you could change over in Final Cut. Now this is a very basic lower third, but usually a lower third has some kind of lead-in. So let's start setting that up. For the base, you're going to want to hit shift and drag that down. Shift keeps it from getting all out of alignment. Hit keyframe record, go in. In this case, I'll do 12 frames. Hold shift again. Right, got to grab that point and drag it up back into position. And then we're going to want our additional one. We're going to put this off to the side. Wait, do not want to have keyframe record on. You always need to make sure that you turn that off before you do anything. Now we can do this. Put that off to the side, hit keyframe record. This will come in at frame six. And it goes right about there. Next we take additional two. This one's going to come in Right, keep forgetting that. Do not want to forget that part. This one will start off up top and come down into position by frame eight. Don't forget to hold shift to keep it aligned. And then you're going to do the same thing for your additional three, which in this case will come in from the other side. Keyframe record and this one will take the longest to come in at frame 14. So this is all going to happen in about half a second. And let's set it to fit in window. Now Oh, that's right. You also want to set something for your text. In this case, you can just go under Behaviors, and you've got Text Animation, Text Basic, Text Continuous, Energetic, Glow, Highlighter, Subtle. You want the ones that have in and out, and not things like scroll text, sequence text, uh, continuous is things like Celebrate, Frightened, Intermittent. You want things like Springy In, Speedster Out, that kind of thing. So just look through here. See if you find something you like. I think I'll do materialize in. Just re render that. And once it's hit frame 30 or so, it's going to speed up considerably. Alright, that's far enough. And one button that's very useful when you want to view something in full screen is this button right here. Just going to tap that, and it immediately brings up this nice display. So, let's see how this looks. So, I think the text needs to come in sooner. Maybe that should be around frame 17. 
Let's re-render that. And in case you don't remember, you hit Command R on your keyboard to render. So let's try that again. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. So that is a very basic lower third, and you can basically do whatever you want with this. So that is the end of this tutorial. Next time I will be showing you how I put together the three-dimensional room intro for our channel. Until then, keep on experimenting with lower thirds and try out every combination of things you can think of.